All right, so let's draw the shear and moment diagrams for this beam. So here I don't have my rules written out here for you. So let me kind of write out the shorthand version of my rules. These are, this is what I'm thinking about as I'm doing my shear and moment diagrams. First, you got to do the statics. Got to solve for what's happening in that roller at A and that pin at B. Got to do the statics. Got to do it correctly, right? Some of the force in Y is equal to zero. Some of the moments is equal to zero. And double check that moment equation. Make sure uh, you get that one right. That's where the m many of the errors occur. Uh, and then I'm going to draw my shear. I'm just pretending like I am hopping onto that shear diagram and I'm getting pushed up and down uh, immediately or gradually uh, by the loads that I see. So if I see a force that pushes me up that amount, I, I go up that amount immediately. If I see a, a distributed load that's kind of wearing on me, pushing me down gradually, um, I'll go down gradually, all right? Then uh, I calculate the area under the shear, uh, thinking about the um, you know positive area is above the axis, negative areas below the axis. And then I go to my moment equation, my moment diagram. So for my moment diagram, I'm getting pushed up and down immediately by uh, concentrated moments. Uh, and again, clockwise moments push me up, counterclockwise moments push me down. But, but what's really also changing in the moment diagram is the area under the shear uh, moves my moment diagram up and down, but not immediately you know, more gradually, uh, and it moves it by the amount under the curve. Uh, and remember, V is the slope of M, so, but generally it's gonna be concave down because downward distributed loads uh, make it concave down. And then just double check. Double check, does, does it start and ends at zero? Is, is the one below it the integral of the one above it? Um, is it going from nothing to constant, to a linear x, to a x squared, to an x cubed, all right? So that is what we, th th those are my five kind of thoughts as I'm doing my um, shear and moment diagram. So let's do this one, let's do this one. All right, I've got a roller at A, so I know I've got that A, Y. I've got a pin at B, so I've no, I know I've got that B, Y. Um, I'm going to sum the forces in Y is equal to zero, some of the moments is equal to zero. So I gotta take care of that distributed load. That distributed load is two kips per foot, and it is over five feet. So it's really a 10 kip force. Put it at the centroid of that distributed load, remember from statics. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sum the moments first. All right, so if I, I can sum moments about A, I can sum moments about B, I can sum moments about any point you want. Uh, so here I'm gonna sum moments about B. So some of the moments about B would be that 10 kip force times 12.5 would be its moment arm. Uh, as a positive moment, then a negative moment from that AY times its 10 foot, uh, and then a negative 30. Some of the moments equal to zero, I can solve for AY. I've got AY is 9.5 kips. And then summing the forces in Y, I could get that BY is going to be 0 0.5, uh, 0.5 kips. So solve for AY, solve for BY. Um, Go ahead and draw those. All right, now I think I'm ready to hop on to my uh, shear diagram. So I'm starting at zero. And then the first thing I see is not a concentrated load that pushes me up or down immediately. It's a distributed load, and it pushes me down gradually, right? It pushes me down gradually. It pushes me down by 10. How does it get there? You know, is it curved? Is it straight? Well, a uniform distributed load uh, pushes it down straight, right? Pushes it down it, as, as like a, with a slope of negative 2x, all right? All right, then I see that 9.5, so I go from negative 10 to negative 0.5, and then nothing else happens until the very end, I go up 0.5, and I, I end up at zero. I end up at zero, all right? The next thing I'm going to calculate, the areas under the curve, all right? So this first one, this area is a triangle. What's the area of a triangle? One-half base times height. So one-half base times height, would give me 25, and I'm gonna call it negative because it is under the axis right there. It is a negative area under the curve. Then I'm gonna to go to this section. I'll break it up in half. I think you can kind of see why. Uh, that area is base times height, um, 2.5, and it's negative. And then I have another, uh, I'll draw this in red, another um, area under the curve. So this is gonna be negative. That area is also 2.5. All right, now I think I'm ready to draw my moment diagram. All right, so let's draw our moment diagram. Let's start at zero. 
Um, there's no immediate moments that push me up immediately, um, but there is a area under the curve that is going to be push me down by 25. But how does it get down by 25? V is the slope of M. I start with a slope of zero. I end with a slope of negative 10. So what kind of curvature would it be if I started with a slope of zero, ended with a slope of negative 10? It'd be like that. And this is what all distributed loads that are pointed down are going to have that type of curvature, an upside down bowl, upside down cereal bowl is kind of what I think about. All right. Then the next, the green area, it's going to push me down by 2.5. All right. And then I encounter that 30 kip foot force. Uh, clockwise pushes me up. So I go up 30. I was at negative 27.5. I'm going to go up to where would, where would I be? Positive 2.5. All right, positive 2.5. Then I see that red area. It's negative 2.5. It goes like that. It is linear. See why those last two ones are linear? Uh, because they were, the V was a constant 0.5. The V was a constant negative 0.5. So I've got this constant downward slope of 0.5. And you can even write here to, to make it clear to me, uh, hey, this part is linear, this part is linear, this part is more like an x squared. And then just double check, right? Then just double check. Does it go from zero to constant to x, x squared? Yeah. That distributed load started out as a constant, then the v would be an x, then the moment would be an x squared. The other ones start out with zero, the v is constant, and the moment is, um, is a linear x. If you're getting back to zero, you're probably doing good. Then just double check the curvature. V is a slope of M. V is a slope of M to make sure you've got the curvatures of these correct. And there we go.